Well, I think the first thing that, that you have to consider is the size of the building. For example, if, if somebody calls me and they've got a one-story brick building that's 12 feet tall, I normally say that we can't compete with hand-laid brick and block. You really need a building that's two-story or more. Then the next step is that is the building big enough to get some duplication and reuses on the molds. The, uh, the site, if it's uh, in the middle of the suburbs where you've got full access all the way around it, you know, and you can do about anything. But if you get some buildings that are tucked away on a narrow city lot, and there's no access on the sides, and you know it's maybe strongly street access. It just may not be a candidate for the equipment to erect it. And when you've kind of got uh, your rendering, or you've got some kind of an elevation roughed in, and an idea, maybe a wall section, I think you've got to get with uh, a precaster and find out what their capabilities are, and get the right guidelines for panel widths, panel heights maximum size of panels and and make some judgment calls based on what you hear from the precaster. Well you have samples about any time that you ask for them. I mean you know, most precasters have samples in stock and in many cases precasters will make a set of samples for an architect to review. Well I think once uh, the precaster is on board the architect and the precaster should find some time to sit down and kind of map out the process. The process is only started because the precaster now has done a panelization and the way he thinks the job should be panelized and the architect needs to understand that to make sure that it's not done in a way that the architect would not prefer or in any way that it's going to affect the design intent. And once that's established and the precaster has his panelization in mind, and you talk about what the projections should look like, what the edges may look like, what the returns may look like, how the corners are going to be if they're not exactly detailed out, and how the finishes and the concrete preparation for, that goes into the molds, what the effects could be. And you usually establish that by doing some rain samples. And what I like to do is to make five rain samples of each color and texture. And these rain samples would be in a size of, say, five by five. I set them up on a truck, I invite the architect to the plant, and I allow him to discard two if he wants to, no more than two, or none. And then whatever we have on the five rain samples, or three, whichever the number ends up being, is the expected uh, range of the precast when it arrives to the job site. So meaning that we're establishing the preconceived color range that we could see on the building. We start out with a, you know, a good set of architectural drawings and we go into the shop drawing stage. And we have our engineer on board and he does a set of erection drawings which establishes all the panelization, all the window openings, all the door openings, all the projections, and all the things about the job, about the building. And then those are submitted to the architect for approval. Generally, we like to see that approval process be no longer than two weeks. Most of the time, the drawings on a building come back from the architect approved as noted. That is the first stage of, of, of a job, and then those drawings are converted uh, by our engineer and we make fabrication drawings for every piece mark on the job, and each job is different. Uh, we, the fab drawings are our tool that we use to build the panels. What we prefer to do is to you know, run the production for a couple of days or a week, and we like to get the architect back out to the plant to take a look at the finished product so that when we start shipping to the job site, the architect has seen something like or the panels that we're shipping. I want them to understand all the design possibilities and understand the economics of some of the things and the decisions that they can make. 